In this part of the lesson, we'll look at how we can extend the scope of an object variable to make it available to every procedure in the same module, and then also to every module in the same project. Let's start by opening up the file that I've downloaded and extracted, and then click the Enable Content button once it's loaded. And it's the same example file that we were working on in the previous part of this lesson. You can play the game a couple of times if you like, just to prove that it still works, and you get different coloured cells depending on which player wins. Let's head to the Developer tab and then the Visual Basic Editor and see the code that we've used to generate this. So the code is already using object variables, four of them in fact, listed here at the top of the subroutine. What I'd like to start doing now is breaking this fairly long procedure into multiple separate parts, just to make it easier to manage. We'll start by creating a subroutine which will handle the resetting of the player's score. So essentially these four instructions which set the scores to zero and change the background colour of the cells back to grey will be extracted into a separate subroutine. Let's begin that subroutine down at the bottom of the module if I give myself a couple of blank lines below the existing end sub and begin a new sub which I'm going to call reset scores. I'm then going to scroll back up to the section of code that I want to replace or remove from the main subroutine. So that's the two lines that set the scores to zero and the two lines which set the colors to gray. I'm going to cut those from the procedure using control X and then scroll back down to the reset scores procedure and paste those two lines of, sorry, those four lines of code in. I can then return to the main procedure to the section that I just cut that bit of code from and then replace that with a call to the reset scores procedure. So I can use the control space keyboard shortcut to show the IntelliSense and then access the reset scores subroutine. Of course, this means that our procedure will no longer work properly. We've declared some variables within the roll again procedure, which now I need to access from within the reset scores procedure, the player one score cell and player two score cell. If I return to Excel and then attempt to play the game, it will fail immediately with a compile error variable not defined. So it's pointing out that the player one score cell is not defined within the reset scores procedure, which is absolutely true. It's defined, if I just reset the procedure there, it's defined within the roll again procedure. I need to make these two variables available to every subroutine, every procedure in the same module. And just as we did with the basic data type variables in the previous lesson, we can do that simply by moving these variable declarations outside of any individual subroutine and declare them at the top of the module. I'll just tidy the code up a little bit to make it a little more readable. One other thing we can do is not absolutely necessary, but it is good practice rather than declaring module level variables with the word dim, we can change the word dim to the word private. This is just to make it more obvious at a glance that you're, you have a, a different scope for these variables than you do for variables declared within a subroutine with the keyword dim. We can now perform a simple check to see that our code still works by returning to Excel and clicking the play button a couple of times and it's clearly now all working again as it did previously. So once again, for the end user, there's no obvious difference there at all. But for you as a developer, it's nice to be able to break a single long procedure into multiple separate parts. It makes a whole set of code just that much easier to manage and to edit later on as well. For particularly large and complex projects, you may find yourself using multiple modules and separating procedures between them. This may mean that you need to provide access to variables to subroutines in different modules. Let's start by creating a new module by right clicking into the Project Explorer and choosing Insert Module. I'm going to change the name of this module so that it's called Scores and Results. And we're going to put some code in here that will deal with generating scores and results, unsurprisingly. What I can do then is I can create a new subroutine in this module, which I'm going to call Create New Scores. And then I'm going to return to module number one and find the code in the original roll again procedure, which generates random scores for player one and player two. So that's just these two lines here. I'm going to take these two lines and cut them with control X and then return to the scores and results module by double clicking on it and then paste those two cut lines into the create new scores procedure. What I can then do is return to the original subroutine back in module number one 
and replace the two lines of code that I've cut now with a call to the create new scores subroutine. Now I need to test that the procedure still works, which of course it won't if I switch back to the Excel window and then click the play button. Once again, I get my variable not defined compile error. So if I click OK, you can see that it's highlighted that again, the player one score cell in the module in which we have not declared player one score cell. I'll have exactly the same problem for player two score cell as well. To resolve this, let's just reset the procedure and then return to module one. And then at the top where we've declared our player one and player two score cell variables, to extend the scope to every module in the entire project, we can change the word private to the word public instead. You may remember from the earlier section on public uh, basic variables that you can optionally use the word global and you may well see global used in older code, but the preferred modern term is to use the public keyword. So let's use public. Having done that, we can switch back to Excel. And now that we've extended the scope of that variable, we'll find all those two variables. We'll find that it all now works again, just as normal.